Exact Track 4D detects dangerous weather days ahead of time so you can make the right plans for your family. All right, as I sat here and I was talking it out, it didn't make any sense to me. Maybe you were hearing the same thing at 10 o'clock, and I thought, well, maybe it's because it's over top of Cuba that we're getting the update at 10. It's set for 11, but there was something stuck inside of the system because of barrel when it went through central time zone, so that's why we saw the 10 o'clock. So we're back to our regularly scheduled updates. 11 o'clock is where we'll see that. Now, I will say, and I'll show you coming up here, the spaghetti plots continue to lean heavily to the west, so I do think that we're going to see that little bit more of a shift here, and that's not the best news you know we're always thinking all right move to the west move to the west and it's good uh, prolonging it out over the Gulf of Mexico the water's warm and it does move into an area that's favorable that could lead to further strengthening outside here we are 78 degrees temperatures that reach 91 possibly 92 here this afternoon uh, I saw 91 at the last check before the storms came in drove those temperatures down to 77 degrees which is how we started the day let's get back to the tropics here we're talking about the rainfall and the impact coming through here we get to Sunday. Notice we're at 11 o'clock and we're just really starting to see the encroachment here of the tropical rain. That's one of the byproducts that we saw earlier as the path shifted the first time at 5 o'clock to the west. So what does that mean? What we're seeing here with the GFS, it's the faster of the models, but we're back to inland areas receiving anywhere between 2 to 4 inches averages and then some of the heavier amounts coming through at 4 to 7 and where it slows down. Here's where we could see those areas topping seven inches and as you see showing what could be as much as 10 inches of rainfall so that would be late Sunday and into Monday and we can back that up here with other models that and what this one is showing showing the lift the energy the strength of the storms here so those are going to equate to some really heavy rainfall coming through and some of these producing what could be two and a half to three inches of rain per hour and that's why we're seeing these amounts all of a sudden elevated once again and I will say that our hopes here here, and I think you're going to be with me on this, is that the GFS is the more accurate of what we're seeing here in the model uncertainty because it does move faster than what we're seeing here in this particular one that is drawing through, and that's based on the euro. For us, that actually equals more uh, rainfall coming. And I'll show you that coming up here. We'll do a model comparison, and I'm going to talk about some of the wind, which is still on the back burner when it comes to some of the damage that could come through here in the potential, I should say, damage. You'll see that the path to, with the path shift our rain shift has also come through so this shows 60 percent it actually increases from that 60 and builds into what becomes the 100 percent as we get into early monday and then starts to tank after that as we get to late monday night and into early tuesday rain chances will continue to change temperatures i mean all of this is going to continue to migrate until we get the overall path and then eventually as it gets out of here the typical pattern will be that regime with the northwesterly flow turning a little bit westerly typically clearing us out and giving us a couple of decent days following the storm as we look to next week. Richard, thanks.